Greetings and welcome to this MOOC Introduction to Biorisk Management. This is the second lecture and in this lecture I will be introducing you to the Biorisk Management System. The effectiveness and efficiency of a laboratory biorisk management system is based on identifying, understanding, and managing a system of interrelated processes for a given objective. This will involve defining, structuring, and understanding the system, as well as continually improving the system through management and evaluation, as well as establishing resources, constraints prior to action. Now, as an effective biosafety manager, you have to understand that the approach to laboratory management involves a knowledge of multiple disciplines. You have to acquire a knowledge of the life sciences, a knowledge of legislation or laws in your respective country pertaining to biosafety and biosecurity, as well as some knowledge of engineering you should be able to understand some engineering concepts such as directional airflow and air conditioning systems, as well as plumbing and other architectural elements. This is something that you need to acquire over the period of your occupation as a biosafety officer or a biorisk manager. The learning objectives of this module are to introduce you to the biorisk management system, the biorisk policy, planning, implementation, and review. These form the essential elements of almost all management practices. The learning outcomes for this particular module are as follows. You should be able to Describe the biorisk management system. Develop a policy statement that defines your organization. Develop a plan for the management of your specific objectives. Develop a strategy to implement your management system and describe the process of review and corrective action. Now, I understand that not all of you may be employed in a facility that conducts experiments involving biological agents. However, for the purpose of this MOOC, I want you to construct a virtual environment for you. Develop a policy statement for a laboratory management system, which you have envisioned. Develop a plan, develop a strategy to implement this plan and describe how you will review your implementation and how you will apply corrective action. In biorisk management, we adopt what is known as a management systems approach. And what exactly is this management system approach? I will delve into this with an ex example, but for now, I will describe some of the elements. The first thing that you need to do as a biorisk manager is to define your system. Once you have defined your system, you can structure that system. After you structure it, you can understand the system in terms of interrelated functionalities. Then you move on to continually improving the system. And finally, you establish your resource constraints. All biorisk management is founded on a policy. It is essential for an organization to develop a policy statement that caters specifically to biorisk management. For instance, this is an example of a policy in which I have stated a generic word, the organization is committed. This is an essential word in every policy to its co-business. You can replace this word co-business with a specific operation associated with your particular organization. 
The next word which I have stated here is continuous improvement. This is the element which ensures that your biorisk management system is constantly improved upon throughout its life cycle. And finally, I have included a word which is compliance. Compliance with international and national guidelines and legislation. This is basically a generic policy. However, you can adopt this policy to your respective organization. This is a very well-known concept in management, the concept of continuous improvement. It involves a cyclical process of planning, doing or implementing, checking and acting to improve upon the original plan. And this leads to a continuous improvement of quality. Coming down to an actual example, let us say all of us are involved in an organization and we plan to set up a diagnostic laboratory for detection of viruses. Let us take this as a real example. So as a bio risk manager, what are the questions which you will pose to your management team? The first question is, what are the laboratory procedures involved? What is the instrumentation required? And what are the standard operating procedures? The second question is, how do we organize the procedures? Organization of procedures involves planning of the work as well as planning of the allocation of tasks to personnel. The third question is, are multiple procedures involved? Handling of samples derived from patients may involve multiple procedures such as transport, decontamination or inactivation. And disposal of waste is another process which may be linked to the operation of your laboratory. The next question we ask is how can I improve the system in terms of safety and efficiency? Now as a biorisk manager, you will note that during the operation of your system, you will encounter what are known as accidents and incidents. And accidents and incidents are an indication of some gap in your operational guidelines. These need to be addressed before they can end up as serious incidents or serious accidents. And this forms the basis for continuous quality improvement. Finally, the last question which you must address is constraints. What are your constraints? Do you have any financial constraints? Do you have constraints in terms of qualified and competent personnel? These are the questions which you must address when you want to commence the planning of any procedure or operation involving biological agents. Let us look at the same case in point by analyzing the process. So the process of viral diagnosis and detection involves with the sample itself, followed by culture of the sample in the laboratory. This may then involve examination using either microscopy or other techniques such as ELISA or PCR. Finally, the results have to be documented and these results may have to be uploaded to a server or to the client using a secure protocol. All of these procedures may result in the generation of waste and this waste needs to be decontaminated and disposed of in compliance with regulations and standard operating procedures. Now this is an example of multiple processes in a single organization or even for a sing single diagnostic procedure. Now the next layer involves personnel. 
Each stage of this process involves personnel and these personnel have to be trained to address the risk posed by each of these procedures. For instance, the personnel handling the sample itself and inactivating the sample may have to be trained in a specific standard operating procedure. So will the person who is culturing the sample and examining the sample. The waste disposal procedures have to be imparted to the personnel involved in the disposal of waste. This brings us to the step-by-step -step process of laboratory management. The first step involves defining the system in which you establish objectives and define processes just as we have done in this example. The next step involves structuring the system. Structuring the system involves defining the roles and responsibilities of the various personnel and the standard operating procedures which they will adopt in order to ensure compliance with the standard operating procedures. The third aspect involves understanding the system. This involves an understanding of the personnel themselves and defining a specific work plan. A laboratory manager has to be aware of the limitations of personnel, fatigue and continuity of working operations can lead to accidents and the virus manager must ensure that workers are properly trained and not taxed beyond their operational capacity. The next step involves the continuous improvement of the system itself. A virus manager is alert to accidents and incidents. He or she addresses these accidents and incidents, identifies gaps and addresses these gaps by adopting suitable interventions via standard operating procedures. A good bio-risk manager always establishes resource constraints. Operating a bio-risk management facility is expensive and involves considerable costs. These may be a constraint to its efficient operation. Constraints may also come in the form of lack of training and a lack of suitably qualified or competent personnel. This brings us to the keys to a successful BRM system. BRM refers to the bio-risk management system. Let us look at some of the keys. At the base of this BRM system is the commitment by top management. Top management must assume ownership of the bio-risk policy. They must provide adequate resources to ensure that this policy can be implemented. Bio-risk management must be prioritized in every organization. Bio-risk policy must be communicated to every member of the organization, including the support staff as well as disposal staff and cleaners. Biosafety and biosecurity management must be integrated throughout the organization. This leads us to the process of acculturation or developing a culture of conscious bio-risk management across the organization. The management should always be alert to identifying opportunities for improvement. And in the case of accidents and incidents, the bio-risk manager must determine root causes and apply 
the pertinent corrective action. The focus of every organization which is involved in the management of the risks associated with biological agents should be on continual improvement. This is via ownership, periodic assessment, ensuring effectiveness and efficiency of standard operating procedures, promotive preventing actions, focusing on continuous education and training, setting goals for improvement, recognizing and rewarding employees. Let us move on now to the planning phase. Planning involves risk assessment, hazard identification and risk management. This constitutes the basis of the AMP cycle, which is based on risk assessment, risk mitigation and performance assessment. I have discussed this cycle in the first lecture of this MOOC. Another aspect which is involved in planning is conformity and compliance. You must identify all relevant requirements and fulfill them within the scope of the biorisk management system. There may be specific legal requirements which are dependent on your national, federal, state, regional or regulatory authorities. Ensure that your organization complies with these requirements. Planning also involves setting objectives, targets and programs. One needs to establish, maintain and document virus controls, objectives and targets. Documentation is essential in any laboratory as it ensures traceability. One needs to establish controls and establish procedures for the documentation of the controls in order to ensure their effective application to the risk management cycle. Let us move on to implementation and operation. The first stage of a bio-risk management system involves planning. Subsequent to that, we implement this plan and operationalize it. Implementation and operation involves the establishment of the organizational structure. The allocation of roles and responsibilities to every member of the organization. The appointment of qualified and competent personnel. The implementation of training as a component of continuous quality improvement and communication of the bio-risk management policies and practices across the organization. This is a brief description of the organizational structure. At the top of this hierarchy, one notes the top management. Top management defines the overall policy. Then we have senior management which reports to top management and the bio-risk management committee which refers to or reports to the senior management. At the base of this organization are the advisors. The organization may have to call in special advisors to address specific requirements in terms of biosafety and biosecurity. The biorisk manager or the biosafety officer is a critical component of this hierarchy. Then we have the facility manager. The facility manager is an engineer who oversees the management of the facility. He or she will ensure the operation of the electrical, mechanical, heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems. The occupational health and safety personnel are involved in ensuring that the personnel comply with the O, S and H guidelines. 
Security management involves both physical security as well as data security. And finally, some facilities which are involved in managing animals and animal studies may have separate personnel to manage animals and their containment facilities. This is an overview of the structure of the organization. We now move on to operational management. Once you have defined the roles and responsibilities of all the personnel involved in the safe working operation of your facility, you have to define the different operations which occur concurrently in the facility itself. And this involves operational control. In addition to biosafety, laboratories have to comply with procedures involving electrical, chemical and physical safety. Inventory management is another aspect which is very relevant to documentation of procedures. Work planning must be conducted in order to ensure that work is distributed evenly and personnel are not taxed beyond their operational limits. Work practices need to be put in place which define the scope and responsibilities of every member of the organization. Operational management also involves waste management for the safe disposal of waste generated by a facility. Personnel management focuses on the training of personnel in terms of their knowledge, skills and abilities pertaining to bio-risk management. And finally, infrastructure and operational management focuses on the maintenance of the facility itself and involves both preventive maintenance as well as maintenance following breakdowns. As you can see, the effective management of any facility involves multiple operations. These operations will occur concurrently and integrating all these operations is a skill that must be acquired by a bio-risk manager. Finally, we move on to review. The top management must review the organization's bio-risk management system and the review must be done periodically. The top management must decide on the periodicity of the review. This may be in the form of an annual review, a weekly review or a monthly review. The primary reason for this review is to evaluate suitability, adequacy and effectiveness of the risk mitigation measures and to assess opportunities for improvement as part of the philosophy of continuous quality improvement. This is some of the information which may be required during a review. One is to look at the results of the audits, evidence of compliance to standard operating procedures, status of risk assessment activities, status of preventive and corrective action, follow-up actions from previous management reviews, recommendations for improvement, accident and incident investigation. Please take note that documentation at every stage of the operation is critical to an effective and efficient review. This brings us to the end of this lecture. In this lecture, I have provided you with an overview of the following. Firstly, we have looked at the management systems approach to bio-risk management. Then we have looked at the key elements of a successful bio-risk management system. You have learned how to develop a bio-risk management plan, ensure conformity and compliance with 
existing national regulations, implement the bio-risk management system and the process of review of the system. Now, in your own specific country, I want you to identify documents related to biosafety and biosecurity. This can be in the form of laws, guidelines, acts or legislation. Please refer to these documents as they will be critical to development of a effective laboratory management system. These are some of the references. I have included these references as PDF documents along with this lecture. Thank you for your participation in this lecture. I look forward to interacting with you in the next lecture. Thank you and stay biosafe.